You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. I am Seth Peterson. I am Debbie Hedren. I'm Rhonda Schwartz. I'm Doris Roberts. This is Jesslyn Gilson. Hello, I'm Victor Webb. Hi, this is Charlotte Ross. Hi, this is Ed Begley Jr. What's up, you guys? This is AJ from the Backstreet Boys. Hi, this is Shannon Elizabeth, and you're listening to Talkin' Pets. Talkin' Pets. Talkin' Pets. And you're listening to Beth, and you're listening to Talkin' Pets. Talkin' Pets. Talkin' Pets. And you're listening to Talkin' Pets. Talkin' Pets. Talkin' Pets. With John Patch. John Patch. You're listening to Talkin' Pets with John Patch. Hello, America, and welcome to Talkin' Pets with your host, John Patch. Join John and his expert guests with all of your pet questions, concerns, comments, and stories. Now it's time for Talkin' Pets with your host, John Patch. And welcome to Talkin' Pets, heard coast to coast on your favorite radio station. This is Talkin' Pets, and I'm John Patch. Joining us is Dr. Jared Lazarus from the Bay Area Veterinary Care Center in Tampa, Florida. Here to answer your medical questions and your behavior questions about your pets at 866-606-TALK. That's 866-606-8255. That's the number to call. When you call into that number, you'll speak with Mr. Zach Buden, and he'll put you on the line with us. So pick up that phone at 866-606-TALK. The show is produced by the ever so lovely and talented Miss Jenna Winters. Hi, boys. Hi, Jenna. How are you? We have a special guest joining us in this hour, a very dear friend, longtime friend, Miss Tippy Hedren. We're going to be talking with Tippy about Shambhala and a couple of other things that are going on in her world. So we welcome your calls and questions if you have one for Tippy. The number again is 866-606-TALK. But once again, you are listening to Talking Pets. I'm John Patch. I'm Dr. Jared Lazarus. I'm Jenna Winters. 866-606-TALK. 866-606-8255. You're listening to Talking Pets. And you're listening to Talking Pets. I'm John Patch. I'm Dr. Jared Lazarus. I'm Jenna Winters. The number to call is 866-606-TALK. We want to welcome onto the program a very dear friend, Miss Tippy Hedren. Hey, Tippy, how you doing? Oh, John, I'm I'm so angry that I've that I've I'm really fuming. I'm, <laughs> you know, I've been dealing with this bill in uh, in Washington, a federal bill, Big Cats Public mm-hmm. uh, Public Safety Protection Act. How many? How many? How long have you been working on that bill? Oh, since the Earth was beginning to cool. <laughs> no, not that, not that, not that long. But well, you look damn good, Tibby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> but I'll tell you what what was ha- what has happened. You know, um, uh, you know the special interest groups that that um, take over whatever they want in in Washington, and uh, they have the money to do it. Well, I'm dealing with that issue on this bill, and. Um, uh, we all know that it happens in Washington, but to be abs- uh, to actually be involved in it is is so distressing and demoralizing. I can't tell you. You know, with this with this bill, this is to stop the breeding and the um, um, sale and use of big cats, lions, tigers, leopards, whatever, uh, to be sold as a pet or for financial use. Now, does that entail also in terms of ownership, or is that a totally different bill? Well, that well, the the people who own the the the, the, the cats. I mean, uh, it would be our worst nightmare to say you can't have that cat anymore. What would we do with them all? We can't even handle the ones that you know the, in the sanctuaries that are that are in need of uh, sanctuary right now. So oh. to have the thousands in in the United States that would all of a sudden be homeless. Uh, that that isn't what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is stop the breeding mm-hmm. and um, of these animals. And I was just made uh, made aware just the day before Thanksgiving that Kenneth Feld, who owns Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey, yeah, you know of him. Yeah, I, I've heard. Mm-hmm. He is probably the perpetrator of more animal abuse in in um, in the United States than anyone. 
You know, I've, I've never actually um, spoke with them in terms of, other than their PR people, because to be quite honest, um, they've been wanting to come on to the show, and I've never invited them. And there was Well, one, there, you know, the, the, the PR that they have, and, and he has all the money in the world to have the best... The, the best PR people, and they'll tell you all these lies about how happy these animals are in the circus, and they are not. Well, I'll tell you, there was one day, and I'm sure you've gone through this yourself many times, Tippy, because I know you go to different places and check them out, but I, I actually, when they invited me down there to check out Ringling Brothers and the elephants and everything like that, I said, well, I don't want to do your tour. I want to go back on my own and do my own things, and you're more than welcome to send one or two people with me, but I'd like the freedom to walk around and see what I want to see. And uh-huh. then they basically just never called me back. No, and then they won't. <laughs> exactly. No, they won't. They won't let you see that mm-hmm. uh, because it's so brutal. It's so it's so horrific that um, you know people have been able to get very bad footage of of these um, the training sessions with the animals, and uh, uh, it may be on um, on television once, and you'll never see it again. But there, you can see it on on. Uh, uh, our good old computers, you know, just mm-hmm. Google it, and uh, you can find it, and uh, it'll break your heart, absolutely break your heart. And uh, Kenneth Feld has said that if um, if he isn't exempt and the breeders that he wants, that this bill will not pass. You know what amazes me is that the average person that's listening right now probably has no clue of what these animals go through at the circuses and all, other than no, the fact no, that... They, no, they don't. And, uh, and uh, as I said, you won't see it on television because I don't know whether, uh, um, obviously, he has so much pull with and so much money that he can do whatever he wants. And uh, it's, really, it's really a shock to see all of this actually in motion. I'm, I'm so upset. I'm... Um, uh, uh, it, it's really having a, a terrible effect on me. But um, well, I know you've worked very hard on this for a long time. So yes, I, I have. I think yeah. most, most people who know that about you would understand why it does bother you. I mean, it's, well, and and uh, um, I, you know, there's there's a couple of big organizations that are working on this bill, to, and they 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 have come to me and said uh, if if we don't exempt Kenneth Feld and the the, the breeders that he wants. This bill will not pass, and I said, "Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go along with it." And they said, "Well, you have to." And I said, "No, I don't. I wouldn't have another night's sleep of my in my life if I acquiesced to that." So I've got to figure out a way to uh, to stop it, and I'm going to go to the public and say, "Write to your congressman, write to your senators, and say that you know this is going on." And that uh, Kenneth Feld is demanding to be exempt, um, and I think that's the only way to do it. Other than that, um, don't go to the circus if it has animals in it. Yeah, we've been saying that for a long time, and that's kind of in reference to what have. I was what I was saying too. Like people just don't understand; they don't get it because I mean, the circus does. I hate to say it, but they do such a good job of PR and putting it out there. Come yeah, see the animals. Come see this. But the average Joe, the average person, doesn't realize actually what goes on to make those animals perform. Yeah, no, they don't, and they will never. They, as you, you know, you wanted to see it. I've wanted to see it, and they won't let you back there. Um, uh, but they'll tell you how happy the animals are, and that's a lie. Those animals, elephants in the wild, uh, need to walk about fifty miles a day. And in, when they're in the circus, all they do is walk from wherever they're chained up to the, to the circus area, and then they go back and they're chained up again. What did and you then they of... get in those horrible tra- you know, those, uh, trucks that, that um, they cram as many animals as they can into the trucks, uh, and uh, they stand there in their own urine and feces, and, I mean, it's, it's deplorable. What did you think of that movie that was out um, a year or two ago with um, Robert Pattinson, and it dealt with like uh, with the elephants and stuff like that, with a traveling zoo? Did you was, see that movie? Was that Water for Elephants? Water for Elephants. Yeah, well, apparently that trainer was supposedly the best trainer. I know him, um, Johnson. And uh, somebody got some footage on him, and they were beating those elephants behind the scenes where they thought nobody could see them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, of course, there, that... There was an it, amazing moment, though, in that film with uh, Robert Pattinson and the elephant after it was beaten in the film. Mm-hmm. 
and it was inside one of the train cars. I'll never forget that footage. And just, the, you know, Robert Pattinson looking at this elephant with the wounds and bleeding and all, and, you know, and then he fought to actually stop that. So I, I thought there were some very very good moments there. Yeah. T- Tippy, don't go away. We've got to take a little break. We're going to come back with Tippy Hedren. You know her as actress, of course, of The Birds and Marnie. You can actually see the story of that, of Hitchcock right now, and the story of Tippy on HBO called The Girl, which I actually did watch the other evening. Uh, quite good movie. But um, Thank you. if you got a question, give us a call at 866-606-TALK, 866-606-8255. We want to hear from you once again. I'm John Patch. I'm Dr. Jared Lazarus. I'm Jenna Winters. And you're listening to Talkin' Pets, joined by Tippy Hedrick. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Is the coast clear? Let's go. Are you sure they went to Petco? Where else would they go? Oopsie. Hey, calm down. <laughs> I smell presents. <gasps> go to PetcoDeals.com and get $6 off your order of $60 or more and up to 40% off hundreds of holiday items at Petco. That's PetcoDeals.com. Go now. Uh-oh, step on it. Okay. Oh, not on my tail. <laughs> go where the pets go x power is a global brand that offers a complete line of stand dryers cage dryers and multiple blasters that cater to both home and professional groomers designed to be quiet lightweight and powerful x power pet dryers will save you time energy and money the x power b2 pro at home dryer is the perfect holiday gift for family and friends Please check out our holiday specials at viperpet.com and amazon.com. For more information, visit xpower.ws or call 855-855-8868. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Listening to Talking Pets, I'm John Patch. I'm Dr. Jared Lazarus. I'm Jenna Winters. Happy holidays to all the listeners out there across the country listening to Talking Pets right now. We hope you have a great holiday season. Tippy, how was your Thanksgiving? Oh, it was fabulous. Um, Melanie cooked and uh, I helped, and uh, the whole family was there, and it was wonderful. This is just great. Is Melanie a good cook? She is <laughs> outstanding. <laughs> yes, I am so proud of her. No, I take it Antonio was there and the grandkids were there? Yes. That's nice when the whole family gets Absolutely. together. Absolutely. And you know, my, my granddaughter, Dakota, is uh, stars as Kate in the series Ben and Kate. Yeah, how's that, go- how's that going? Oh, well, do you watch it? It's hilariously funny. I love that show, by the I way. Do. Oh, do you really? Yeah, I really do. I had no idea that that was your granddaughter. That is my granddaughter. I oh, my gosh. Yeah. She is so funny on that show. She is hysterical. You know what I think is one of the funniest programs, though? And I, I got into it and it, Raising Hope. Oh. <laughs> I laughed my behind on that show. I love watching that program, and you were on it, and you were playing. You were playing the corpse. I was. <laughs> and and I don't know if people were really paying attention to what was going on in the background, but Laura Leachman was taking your clothes off. Yes, she was. <laughs> yes, she liked my dress. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, oh, Tippy, don't show too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great show, and Melanie was in that with you too, which was yeah. really cool. Yeah, she has sort of a running part on it. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, they're that's they're great. trying to bring me back as a ghost or you know, uh, um, past events or that kind of thing. But I think it'd be hysterical. Yeah. That is one of the funniest shows. I love that program. Yeah. You know, and I did actually finally because you know when you said you show sat today, um, I I actually uh, tuned into the girl. I watched mm-hmm. it the other night, and wow, what it was maybe I don't know maybe it's me and I'm being biased because I know you, but. The thing is, I thought it was done very well. And, I think it was, too. And I thought, actually, yeah. that Sienna Miller, who plays you in the movie, 
Um, I mean, just from knowing you all these years, she did a really great job with like you were probably one of the most elegant women I've ever met, Tibby. I mean, oh, from the you. from the first moment I met you, and you know, just in your poise and your beauty and just your character, everything oh, about you. And Sienna Miller really brought that out in the film. But for the most average person that liked Hitchcock in his films, he really was a little creepy. <laughs> Yeah, it, unfortunately, and, and I'm not the only one this happened to. There were many, uh, many women. Two of them got pregnant to get out of their contracts. Wow. Um, and uh, one of them, he did the same thing. He said he'd ruin her career, and so she changed her name. I don't know to what. Um, but uh, anyway, it's a, it's a terrible thing to be the object of someone's obsession if you're not interested in it. And uh, it, it eventually, it, uh, you know, I didn't let it ruin my life. He ruined my career, but he didn't ruin my life. Uh, but I just had to get out. Well, the and weird part was when I the Birds is probably one of my favorite movies of all times. Even before I knew you, Tippy, it was just like I love the I love the movie. Yeah, and, it's a, it's a good one. And there's a scene in there where you go up into the attic or whatever the upstairs room, and mm-hmm. these birds come flying at you. And now I remember and, it. Wow, watching the watching this movie, The Girl on HBO, it really shed a whole different light of the way I look at that film now, knowing what you went through in that scene. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It was. Um... It was a, a rather bad week. Yeah, and then you went on. Marnie was the one that you did with Sean Connery. Yes. I understand. Uh, is this myth or is this true? Did you actually name a cat after Sean Connery? I did. Did you? Yes, I have Rod Taylor, uh, Sean Connery, Marlon Brando, John Saxon, Antonio Banderas, and Melanie Griffiths. <laughs> now, is it true though that you you're one of your favorite actors? And I've read this somewhere that Johnny Depp is like one of your favorites. Yes, he is, and I, uh, this stray kitty came to my door and said, would you open the door because I'm going to live here now? And I opened the door, and so Johnny Depp now lives with us as well. That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, and I you... sleep with them all every night. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Now, how did you go from being, like, you were discovered, I believe, in a commercial by Hitchcock, and then you were put onto the birds, and then, of course, you did Marnie, and Marnie, you know, was where a lot of the creeping kind of happened with Hitchcock, it seems yes. like, in that movie, The Girl. Yes. But how did you go with being such an established actress to being, you know, the founder and president of Shambhala, which is the Roar Foundation? Yeah, basically, uh, an animal lover from birth, uh, did two films in Africa, and, of course, was de- deliriously happy there because they had wild animals in the movies that I did. And uh, that was in 1969 and 1970, and... Uh, um, during those years, environmentalists all over the world were telling us, people of the world, that if we didn't do something right then to save the animals in the, wor- in, in the world, by the year 2000, they would all be gone, just due to encroaching civilization, sport hunting, poaching. And, um, uh, you know, we have been able to stave off their demise completely, uh, but it still goes on, and we're still fighting the war of keeping, keeping these animals on our planet. And, you know, one of the biggest problems is, is overpopulation of people, but nobody ever does anything about that. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Oh, I know I'm right. Although I did read recently in, actually in the USA Today paper, which I read every day because of the show and everything, that, that they, they're predicting that the, pop, the, the United States population in this country is decreasing more and more because women are having less and less children. So by the year 2050... Well, not from the people that are coming over from over the border. There, there you go. Yeah, the, the people that are coming into the country makes well, a difference. Well, that's their that's their whole uh, uh, their their whole mo is to take over the United States. You know, there was something I read about you, and I think it's I think it's on your website, which is shambala dot org. If people want to check it out, and it's s h a m b a l a dot org. But you get into um, there was an article about Zimbabwe farm rescues. And is that where, what, there were poachers or, or people coming in and killing all the wildlife there and taking the land? Yeah, this is the, that, this was going on in, uh, horribly. I mean, it really was a, um, uh, yeah, they, over, they overthrew the whole country and ruined the tourist trade completely. And uh, I don't know that it's, it has, uh, if it has come back yet. I don't know. I, I haven't. Now, the, they say, actually, that... Um that the Zimbabwe National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals are the ones that are getting involved in there. And for people who don't know, the landlocked country in southern Africa, Zimbabwe, is about three times the size of England. 
So that's a good fact for people to know. And then thousands mm-hmm. of animals were abandoned, maimed, or killed. Oh, yes. And they were hacked, slashed, burnt, caught in snares, starved, or beaten to death in that country. And, and not only wild, but domestic and livestock as well. Yeah, it was a nightmare. It's amazing. And there's a lot to learn on Shambhala.org, so I absolutely recommend everybody going onto the website. Yeah, and I have a lot of information about why these animals are not pets and also uh, about the, uh, the political situation. Tippy, stay with us because I want to talk a little bit more about that when we come back. Okay. We're speaking with Tippy Hedren. If you've got a question or a comment, we welcome it in at 866-606-8255. That's 866-606-TALK. Don't forget you can watch us live on the webcam at TalkinPets.com. No G in the talking. And also join us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm John Patch. Dr. Jared Lazarus. I'm Jenna Winters. This is Talkin' Pets. Talkin' Pets. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. It's the holidays at PetSmart, so come one and all. There are hundreds of gifts for pets big and pets small. Toys only at PetSmart so special and new. They'll love the gifts. You'll love the value. Hurry to PetSmart today for your very best friend and save 30 to 50% before the holiday ends. The holidays are just around the corner. Go to PetLifeRadio.com slash PetSmart and save up to 30% on awesome gifts for the pets and pet people in your life. Toys, collars, leashes, PetSmart gift cards, treats, and more. So shop early and save money. Go to PetLifeRadio.com slash PetSmart today. Hi, this is Michelle Fern, host of Best Bets for Pets. I want to tell you about a brand new product that has customers raving. It's Stop Quiet Off Dog Training Spray. It's made from all natural organic botanicals and will not harm or scare your dog in any way. There is nothing else on the market like it. It works because dogs don't like the smell, so they stop the behavior. Stop Quiet Off works by spraying it on the chest or near their nose so they get a good whiff of the spray. It works on barking, jumping up, rushing doors, stealing food off the counter, and begging and eating unwanted items on walks. To order your bottle of Stop Quiet Off, go to DogTrainingSpray.com. That's DogTrainingSpray.com. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, this is the place for a special paparazzi treat. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. With this hour's Talking Pets news from the USA Today, here's your host, John Patch. Out of Boise, Idaho, state wildlife managers are worried about the increasing number of collisions between motorists and deer, elk, and moose. Studies show more than 5,000 deer, elk, and moose were killed by vehicles on Idaho roadways last year. Dr. J? In Watsonville, California, officials are hopeful that a peregrine falcon was found Thanksgiving Day with a pellet gun wound in his right leg near an airport in Santa Cruz County will make a full recovery. The bird was in guarded condition at the Wildlife Center in Silicon Valley in San Jose. In Ellensburg, Washington, a chimpanzee at Central Washington University who learned to use American Sign Language has died at the age of 36. Dar died on last Saturday of unknown causes, said Mary Lee Jenswald at the Chimpanzee and Human Communication Institute. The chimp learned to sign from infancy. Out of Marshfield, Massachusetts, a Massachusetts judge has granted a restraining order to a Marshall woman that also protects her six-year-old Labrador dog. It's believed to be the first time an animal has been covered under the domestic violence restraining order since Governor Patrick signed an animal welfare bill into law in August allowing the practice, the Patriot Ledger reported. John? Out of St. George, Utah, arguing that local protection efforts have failed, the Center for Biological Diversity petitioned to have the Virgin River spotted and uh, listed as an endangered species. The Spectrum reported the silvery minnow has lost more than a half of its natural range due to water developments, habitat um, degradation, drought, and climate change. 
Out of New Cumberland, West Virginia, the Hancock County Sheriff's Department is looking for homes for three of ten horses that were seized in a drug case this year. Homes were found for other seven, the other seven horses. Sheriff Mike White says his department doesn't have a place to house the horses in the winter. Hancock County Dog Warden Nicole, Nicole Buzik says the horses could be euthanized as a last resort if no one takes them. And out of Carter County, Missouri, nearly three dozen dogs were removed from a rural home of a suspected animal hoarder. Out of Shawnee, Oklahoma, the search continues for a missing pet kangaroo that disappeared from a Shawnee home on Thanksgiving. The Manusen family believes that their pet, named Lucy Sparks, hopped off Thursday after being spooked by the family visitors on Thanksgiving. John? And once again, you're listening to Talking Pets. I'm John Patch. And I'm Dr. Jared Lazarus. I'm Jenna Winters. 866-606-TALK is the number, 866-606-8255. Hey, don't forget, you can watch us live on the webcam at TalkingPets.com, and you can uh, chat with us in the chat room as well. But join us on Facebook and Twitter. We're speaking with the ever-so-lovely Tippy Hedren. This is Talking Pets. But baby, it's cold outside. I've got to go. But away. baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been, been hoping that you so very nice. I'll hold your hands. They're just like my mother ice. will start to worry. What's your My hurry? father will be pacing the floor. Listen to the fireplace. So really, I'd better scurry. Oh, please don't. But maybe hurry. just half a drink. Put more. some records on while I. And you're listening to Talking Pets. I'm John Patch. I'm Dr. Jared Lazarus. I'm Jenna Winters. 866-606-TALK is the number, 866-606-8255. We're speaking with Tippy Hedren. Uh, you know her from the birds, you know her from Marnie. She's also the founder and president of the Roar Foundation, Shambhala Preserve. You can check out more on the preserve, of course, at her website, which is shambhala.org. You can also get to it to uh, through talkinpets.com. Uh, T-A-L-K-I-N Pets.com or Shambhala.org and that's S-H-A-M-B-A-L-A dot org. Tippy, I've got a question for you from uh, George in Othello, Washington. Hey George, how you doing? Welcome to Talking Pets. Good afternoon, John. How you doing? Doing good. Hey, I like your new news uh, segment there. I think Diane Sawyer better worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I wanted to ask Tippy uh, uh, how she liked working with Alfred Hitchcock and, and uh what a great uh, producer and director he was! I, uh, and uh, has she had a chance to see the uh, the new Alfred Hitchcock movie? Uh, yeah, I saw the movie. I was uh, involved with the writing of it as well. Oh, really? Cool. Yes. Um, so I am. I am. Uh, it is so very true to uh, everything that happened. Just a couple of things that I would have not had done, but but um, the director had a lot of choices. You know to make so, Do you think um, it, but oh, to work with him was was absolutely wonderful. He was not only my director; he was my drama coach. Oh, really? Uh, because uh, the Birds was my first film. I had done a, a tremendous number of, of commercials, but where that gives you a technical background, it doesn't give you uh, uh, how to how to become an actress. How do you break down a script? Um, how do you uh, become another person? And uh, well, he, he sure was, did a good job teaching you because that was a great movie. Yeah, thank you. And that was really. <laughs> I remember uh, I was pretty scared when I saw that show. So. Good. What do you uh, say to be now to like the average person out there, the young, the young adults, you might say, that are wanting to move to L.A. or whatever and get a job in acting? Do you, first thing I would say was be independently wealthy, <laughs> 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 because it's a tough, tough career to choose. They take advantage of a lot of the actors, I think, now, too, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you're always looking for a job, and you're always being criticized, and, uh, you know, it's not easy. And I, I will never tell you to, that this is going to be an easy road to, to hoe. Is there anybody in your family that uh, uh, took after you and done that? Yeah, my, my, uh, my granddaughter. Oh, cool. And she is uh, uh, stars as Kate in the series uh, on Fox, Ben and Kate. Right really? after raising huh? hope, yes. Oh, be darn. That's well. You know, George. Word. You know, George too. That her daughter is Melanie Griffith, and her son-in-law is Antonio Banderas. So <laughs> you can't do much better there. Well, that's pretty famous. Uh, yeah, you, that's that's pretty good. I didn't know that. That's pretty neat. Uh, yeah. And Tippy, of course, is still acting as well, and in, in, in a bunch of different things. And um, I'm waiting for the ghost scene to come back on Raising Hope because I know <laughs> yeah. I'll be I'll be laughing. Oh yes, indeed. 
<laughs> well, I, I sure uh, you sure put some good shows on that for us, and I appreciate uh, your contribution, to, and, and especially Thank taking you. care of the animals now. That's uh, that's really a big thing. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it's just uh, I'm glad somebody's doing it that really cares about animals. And yeah. Thanks. Well, George, I know I know you're an avid listener too of the Talking Pet Show. It, I, I'd really appreciate, it, and I know Tippy would too, is if you can send people to her website, which is shambala.org, because it's so important for these people to partake in getting this bill passed and any help that you can help out um, Tippy with um, that would definitely. Now, is this going to go through Congress? Or? Yeah, but uh, it's a federal bill. Yes. By, uh, and it's been uh, we have uh, a, a good number of uh, of um, people signed up already. There's it's uh, over over sixty or seventy. Can you In sign fact, up on just today, Senator Sherrod Brown from Ohio signed on. Can you can you uh, sign a petition or anything on your website to to, to help it uh, to keep their interest up on it so they'll pass it for you? Is there anything like that that the average person can do? Oh yes, write to your senators and your congressmen. And uh, the bill is is uh, uh, titled "Big Cats Public Safety Protection Act." Okay. In the House, it's uh, House Number uh, HR forty one twenty two. Now, th- just get Congress to do something. They're not. They're kind of gridlock again with some of these stuff they're supposed to be doing. Well, now. that's the problem. Yeah. You weren't listening at the beginning of the program. No, uh, uh, the yeah. Senate number the <laughs> Senate number is uh, 3547. Now they've been kind of putting this on hold for quite a while. Uh, it was introduced in March. Yeah, so and you actually had in the Florida, where I live, Tippy in, in Florida, Kathy Castor and Bill Barakas actually yes. just signed, right? Yes. So that that's a that's a good movement. And Kathy actually is great. I love Kathy. Wonderful. I'm very grateful to them. I hope I hope they will help get um, other uh, representatives and senators in uh, the other senator in um, uh, to sign on as well. So the, again, it's the Big Cats uh, and Public Safety Protection Act. That's what people want to look for. Yes. And I know I looked at your website, and there's a, a big page on it. So George, you can send people there, and there's information on the website about it too, and how to, you know what to do because it's really important. And there's also a piece on, on Kenneth Feld and what he has done. Yeah, I didn't see that one, but I'm going to have to search for that one. So oh, I'm, 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 okay, then I'm going to check and make sure it's up. I definitely want to read that one on Kenneth yeah. Feld, so for yeah, sure. Yeah, he has been taken to court four or five times uh, because of animal abuse. And he has been fined um, several hundred thousand dollars each time. He just pays it and goes off and does whatever he wants to do. That's the big thing. When you got money, That's it right. seems to talk, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So, and it, 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 it hangs out in Washington quite a bit. Uh, unfortunately, and we all, uh, all know that. But I, as I was saying before, to be actively involved in it is, is absolutely it's sickening. It's absolutely sickening to know that this goes on. Yeah, and this is a, this is an issue that is so. I mean, it's it's so deplorable that the that that our government allows the, this kind of thing to go on, the breeding of lions and tigers and the, 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 some of the hovels that they are living in and the terrible treatment that they get. I and I'm ask- not saying everybody treats them that way, but the, the, but it shouldn't happen at all. You know, there is not one thing that we can give a wild animal in captivity that they need. Nothing. Well, what about, what did you think, and George, by the way, thanks as always for the call there in Othello, Washington. Um, but what did you think, Tippy, about o- that Ohio case with that guy that had all those cats? It was, a, it was, it was unbelievable to see all those beautiful cats that were just laying there dead because oh, it was, it was police horrible. killed them. And this them. is another, another situation. As an example, this, this whole situation should, should never have happened. It should never have existed. I mean, and it has to stop someplace because there's so many people who have been hurt children and adults I think and the, I think hurt the, or killed is it true though that these people the average people out there can can find a place to, like where they can purchase like a cougar or a lion or a tiger or whatever they want yeah, for, you can for do, minimal you can money up, you can look it up on the internet it's amazing look in your look in your newspaper Florida is terrible but why do they want them I mean in why Europe, do they want them because they can get them because they can and they don't they they uh, you know when when uh, you know why there's so many dogs in the in the shelters 
is because people don't really look into what kind of a dog are they buying. Is it a hunter? Is it a lap dog? Mm -hmm. Is it a a border collie who needs an extraordinary amount of of exercise? They don't do their homework. No, they don't do their homework. And when they go see those little lion cubs and tiger cubs, they just go, oh, i got to have it. And, you know, by the time they're seven or eight, nine months old, they've destroyed the, the house and taking a pretty good chunk out of the people. And, you know, I've seen some cats, actually, where people have had in their homes, and I don't know if you have any at your preserve at Shambhala, but where they declawed them or actually pulled their teeth out. Oh, are they with the lions and tigers? Yeah. Oh, yes, they come in that way. Oh, yes. It's absolutely oh, no. amazing. And, and when they declaw, most of them have been bad jobs, and the poor animals limp around, and uh, it, it's just, it breaks your heart. Just breaks your heart. Yeah, I mean, there was one cat I saw one time that they declawed, and such, because these cats weigh, your average, say, lion, do you know how much, how, how much do they weigh? Well, they can go anywhere from 400 to almost oh, 450 pounds, 500 pounds. So you got to imagine 500 pounds, 50 walking... Pounds on their paws after they're declawed and some of them get infection and so on and so forth but it's not going to stop a cat doing from what it needs to do i mean just when i you know when i was up at your place up at shambhala um you know it's amazing because these cats go where they want to go if you know what i mean number one and number two and they do spray yes they do (laughs) so you're going to have that going on in the house too (laughs) i mean you think your little kitty cat that you adopt from the shelter is strong urine try putting a tire or a lion there Tippy, yeah. can you can you stay for a couple more minutes? Ah, uh, yes. Thanks. That's Tippy Hedren, of course. If you've got a question or a comment, give us a call. 866-606-TALK. 866-606-8255. Once again, I'm John Patch. I'm Dr. Jared Lazarus. I'm Jenna Winters. We welcome you to visit uh, Tippy's website, which is Shambhala.org. Please do and help her with this bill. It's the Big Cats Public Safety Protection Act. It's on her website at Shambhala.org. And you can also donate for the cats because it takes a lot. And that's what I'm going to ask Tippy when we come back on what it takes to feed these cats and take care of Shambhala on a daily basis. You're listening to Talking Pets, 866-606-8255. Talking Pets. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well-informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well-read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to audibledeals.com. That's audibledeals.com. Dyson. The new Dyson Animal Backs are powerful bagless upright backings for homes with pets. Air muscle and radio root cyclone technology generates the strongest suction power to powerfully remove dust, dirt, and pet hair from the home or car. To order your Dyson Animal Back, go to DysonDeals.com. DysonDeals.com to order your Dyson Animal Back today. Dyson. Music to your ears. Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Blake here with my sidekick, Super Smiley. The giant mutt and spokes dog for throwaways. You're listening to Pet Life Radio, and I'd like to tell you about our brand new show, A Super Smiley Adventure. Our show explores adventures with animals. They can be traveling out in the world trips or inner journeys where our animals lead us to inspiration and self-discovery or just plain fun adventures. Join us here on Pet Life Radio on A Super Smiley Adventure. Good boy. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com Mama Sita Donde esta Santa Claus Donde esta Santa Claus And the toys that he would need Mamacita, oh, where is Santa Claus? I look for him because it's Christmas Eve. I know that I should be sleeping, 
And you're listening to Talking Pets. By the way, if you're looking for that holiday shopping thing, I just noticed that Alfred Hitchcock, the Masterpiece Collection, is out from 1942 to 1976 from Universal. Fifteen of the Master of Suspense most iconic films have been digitally restored, and many are available for the first time in high definition. Rear Window, Vertigo, North by Northwest, Psycho, Marnie, and The Birds are among the films in this set, which star the likes of James Stewart, Cary Grant, Ingrid Bergman, Doris Day, Kim Novak, Eva Marie Saint, Anthony Perkins, Jessica Tandy, Sean Connery, and Tippi Hedren. Each film comes with its own bonus material, including interviews, trailers, documentaries, and photographs. There's all new feature on The Birds in a collectible 48-page book with memorabilia and um, other materials. So you can check that out in your stores if you're interested in that Alfred Hitchcock for the holidays. 866-606-TALK, 866-606-8255. Once again, you are listening to Talking Pets, and we're speaking with Tippi Hedren, actress and founder, president, of course, of Shambhala, the Roar Foundation, amongst many, many other things. And if you can help her out, check out Shambhala.org, please, and also support her on Big Cat's Public Safety Protection Act. Uh, Tippi, you know, before we went out to the break, I had mentioned, you know, you've had Shambhala since. When When was it? When did you actually find or found um, uh, Shambhala? Oh, that was in 1983 that I founded the Roar Foundation. What did and, you start with cat-wise? I mean, how many? Oh, uh, well, in 1972. So I've been doing this for 40 years. Wow. And now well, I know what I'm talking about. And you've got over, what, <laughs> 50 cats? Uh, yeah, we have uh, just under 50 cats now. Wow, that's, that's amazing. And well, we, at one point we had 150, and this is, this is the lowest amount we've had since, um, oh, the early 70s. Well, working, and you just said that you know what you're talking about, working with them, living with them, feeding them. Yep. On a daily basis, you know what these cats are capable of. Yes, and indeed I do. And we no longer have any contact with them, and we haven't for, oh gosh, almost 15 years. And the thing is, is that you work a lot with like major organizations as well, like the HSUS and the, <clears throat> the ASPCA and other organizations uh, when they find animals like this too. So yes. you know, you know the backgrounds. Yes, I, we know the, the, where they came from, what sort of life they had, and it's um, I, every one of them have a sad story. Every one of them. I mean, we have a, um, a lion who is living in a basement out, outside of Branson, Missouri, with a family of children, and um, I mean, it was it was it it, it was a, a a horror just waiting to happen. Um, and uh, they finally convinced the people that um, this isn't a good idea, and so we were we were able to take him. Uh, we have a black leopard that was purchased in Texas for six thousand dollars, and uh, the couple brought him to their beautiful home in uh, Newport Beach, California. And as the little cub grew, uh, he was scratching the lady's satin sofas and chewing her Jimmy Choo shoes. Mm. So she uh, put him in a closet, and that's where he lived. And uh, the husband would come home at night and put um, gauntlets up to his shoulders and take the cat out wrestling with him, uh, teaching the cat, this is how you treat humans. And um, we heard about it and said, yes, we will take that cat. And finally they acquiesced and and, um, brought him to us in a zippered clothes bag in the trunk of their car. Mm. And he, it took almost four years before he wouldn't come flying at us at the fence. You know, there was um, th- there's a story behind, you know, in my life with Tippy is like when my mom died, uh, Tippy gave me a print of Patrick, and Patrick is a liger, a half lion, half tiger, and huge cat. Um, but I, I think your average person didn't believe that a tiger would actually mate with a lion, but it is well, possible. Well, it, it, can, it can only happen in captivity, but they have the same uh, um, um, uh, gene, uh, same, uh, oh, what do you call it? Oh, shoot. Yeah, Excuse me, I'm so I'm so so distracted by this bill, I can't even think straight. <laughs> I, I understand, totally. They have the same chromosome count, so they can, they can breed, and um, they but, do. Patrick was a, and Patrick's my middle name. Patrick was actually a beautiful cat. And, yes, he and was. That print hangs on my wall here, and you dedicated it to my mom. So I always thank you for that. Well, you're very welcome. He was my he was my great buddy, and you know he would have one day. Uh, I saw that his meat was covered with um, uh, yellow jackets, and so I went to get one of those plastic bags that the that the insects can go in, but it, they can't go out. Mm-hmm. It's a rather cruel thing, and I don't like like it but that nevertheless it, it uh, my cats mean a lot to me right 
and uh, I went to put the, hang that uh, so that maybe they would the insects the yellow jackets would go over to this plastic bag. And as I was walking by the fence, Patrick saw that I was a little too close to his meat. And all of a sudden, his face changed, and he started with this horrible, horrible sound. And he came running at me like a locomotive and jumped up on the fence. And, um, I mean, that cat was, when he first came to us when he was seven years old, he weighed almost 700 pounds. He jumped up on the fence, and uh, my heart just almost stopped because I thought, if that fence wasn't here, Mm -hmm. I would have been gone. You know, it's interesting, too, um, if people um, wanted to tour, they can come out and tour with you, and you can meet Tippy. and the proceeds from all this go into supporting Shambhala and feeding these cats, because it's an expensive bill every day that you have to feed these cats. Yes, it is. But I, I, have, to, I have to raise 75000 every month. It's amazing. To, to take care of uh, the Shambhala Preserve. Well, Tippy, before we run out of time, because we've got about a minute left, do you have a final word that you can give America? Um, well, uh, don't buy a wild animal. There is nothing you can get him that he needs. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, please, if you hear of anybody thinking about getting a wild animal, please try to dissuade them uh, from doing that. And please go on to her website, shambala.org, and help her with the Big Cats Public Safety Protection Act. Please support that. Tippy, you know, I love you to death, and uh, give my best to your family, Melanie and Antonio and everybody, and uh, happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays to you and your audience. Thanks so much, Tippy. Yeah. Okay, thank you so, love so you. much for calling me. Love you, too. Take care. Bye-bye. That's Tippy Hedren. You know her as actress and founder of Shambhala, and, of course, it's uh, the Roar Foundation, and if you can help her out and support her, please, please do. Um, that's a great thing to do for the holidays. If you want to give someone, you can actually make a donation towards Shambhala in their name, the Girl, and coming out in theaters next week, I think, or the week after, is Hitchcock. I know I'm screening it next week, so I'll be seeing it before it comes out, so you can read my reviews at TalkinPets.com. Just click on Movie Reviews, and there they are. From myself, John Patch. Dr. Jared Lazarus. Jenna Winters. Bye for now. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs>